And now to our headlines today, exclusive Australia has strongly backed uh, a permanent seat for India in the UN Security Council. Speaking to headlines today, Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop stressed the need to launch joint counter-terror operations. Speaking to our Deputy Editor Smita Sharma, Bishop revealed that more than 100 Australians had joined the IS. Even as India and Australia continue to cooperate so closely, there are reports every now and then of attacks in Australia, especially in Victoria, uh, in Melbourne, in Sydney against Indians. Uh, are Indians really safe? What is your message to the Indian community in Australia? Indians are welcome to visit Australia. We welcome Indian students, Indian tourists, and there is a significant Indian community in Australia. About 450,000 people claim Indian heritage. So. Indians are an integral part of our community and they're very welcome and positive contributors. There was an incident recently where tragically an Indian woman was killed. I'm assured by the authorities that this was a random criminal act, uh, that it was not racially motivated. The Premier of New South Wales, Mike Baird, has committed to ensuring a full and thorough investigation that is currently underway and has committed to ensuring to find the perpetrator and bringing them to justice. Uh, but I am reassured that it was not racial racially motivated and, and tragically criminal acts can take place anywhere at any time. But you know, especially in the suburbs of Sydney or in the suburbs of Melbourne where most of the Indian community in fact lives, uh, what are the kind of steps that the governments have taken and which your central federal government in fact has instructed for them to take to ensure that such attacks do not happen? Some years ago when there were some attacks on Indian students we responded um, swiftly to ensure that the New South Wales, the Victorian police where the Indian communities are were aware of the concerns. They have put in place a number of programs and initiatives to deal with it and our law enforcement agencies are very well aware of the need to ensure that people are safe and feel safe. But sadly, random criminal attacks can occur anywhere. They can occur here in New Delhi, they can occur in Sydney or Melbourne. Um, people need to take appropriate precautions when they are tra travelling, don't go out alone at night. But that's the advice I'd give to somebody wherever they were travelling around the world. Uh, but the Premier has confirmed that they will do all they can to bring this perpetrator to justice. You know, moving to the larger question of terrorism, really, we saw the tragic Sydney siege happen, in fact, uh, and uh, the kind of chaos that it led to, uh, the kind of lives, in fact, that were lost. Uh, but on terrorism, really, what is the bigger threat today? Are there lone wolf kind of attacks that is the bigger threat? Uh, is the rise of the IS, in fact, is a threat that you see uh, impacting Asia as well? What is the biggest threat when it comes to terrorism today? I think that we are experiencing and witnessing a more complex, more dangerous, more global form of terrorism than ever before. It's exemplified by ISIL or Daesh, as it's called in the Middle East, a barbaric terrorist organisation that has no regard for state boundaries or nation states or laws or disregards humanity or any civilised behaviour. Some of these crucifixions and beheadings and mass murders that are carried out and then uh, put up on social media is positively medieval. And that's why Australia is taking this um, threat of terrorism so very seriously. We are affected. In fact, very few countries are immune from this because there are about 100 Australians who have joined with this terrorist organisation and are fighting in Syria and Iraq. And that's why Australia has joined in a coalition uh, led by the United States and the Iraqi government to try and stop this terrorist organisation at its source, help the Iraqi Defence Force take back territory that it's claimed and stop the suffering of the people of Syria and Iraq. But tragically, these foreign terrorist fighters can go home or go elsewhere and seek to carry out a terrorist attack. And that's what we're trying to stop. What it means is that the peace-loving nations of the globe have to come together and work together, put aside differences, and work together to counter this virulent form of barbaric terrorism.